Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It's been a while. So today I just wanted to go ahead and update you guys kind of what I did for the Krangled event. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, it's the event where all of the passives on the tree are hidden and randomized. Um, everyone's on the same seed though. So we ended up playing uh, this build called Righteous Fire. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. And uh, I think that there are a lot of good options for RF, but for people who just want to hit level 50 and play with Righteous Fire, uh, I think Slayer is actually a pretty solid option. I think Endgame, like Deadeye, but you know, if you're doing Endgame, that's entirely different. So I'm just going to kind of show you guys a little bit of what it looks like. So this character actually managed to uh, level Deathless. It's pretty easy actually on, on this specific variant because we get a lot of... Uh, get a lot of life and a lot of damage which makes it a lot easier to scale um yeah so i'm just going to kind of show you some basic rf gameplay i mean you guys know how it works right but the damage is actually pretty good considering everything is pretty crangled um yeah so i'm going to go ahead and cover the passives and kind of explain why i went with slayer as the option and then if you guys kind of want to follow along then you know you're more than welcome to okay so First off, right away, if you guys are familiar with kind of what we do with Juggernaut, we mule from the Witch. So you make a Witch, you get the level 4, and that gets you Rolling Magma, Arcane Surge, Elemental Proliferation. Uh, you also go ahead and pick up uh, Frost Blink with that as well. Uh, so if you just look at the generic RF POB that I have for Jug, you pretty much are getting all those same gems. Now the reason why it works really well with Slayer right now is when you first start off, you actually get Int right away, which is fantastic because normally unlike Juggernaut, or Marauder start, you don't actually get Int until you're like technically over here. So this right away smooths it out a little bit. And for a lot of people who are saying they hate rolling Magma in Act 1, it is a little painful at the beginning, but it actually gets pretty good and I'll show you why. At the beginning, I just grabbed like 3% movement speed, right? Came across, grabbed my intelligence, get a little bit of life over here. And then right over here, you get 7% life. But more importantly, right over here, you actually get 25% fire damage. With enemies ignited by, you have minus 5 res. More importantly, that's 25% damage right away. And then right over here, you get 30% fire damage with a 6% pen. Uh, so those together right there really give you a lot of damage at the beginning. From there, I just moved across with Devotion. And by the time I came over here, I started having int issues again. So you've got an int node right over here, along with another int node if you decide to pick it up right over here. Um, from here, I moved downward. You can grab some attack and cast speed along with a little bit of fire resistance that you may need to help sustain your righteous fire later. Um, coming across here, we've got last rites, although you don't really need to pick this up until library because that's when you actually get your first curse, right? Um, coming up over here, you get the life, and then you can grab this wheel over here, which actually is hardy, which is one of our beautiful regeneration nodes. More importantly, it's on a fire mastery. So this is hardy plus the fire mastery together. Now, one of the annoying things about playing it on a <clears throat> on a uh, duelist is we don't actually get a lot of our gems until library. So I just did rolling magma up until about 32 when we got our gems from library. And then if you look, it's the standard RF gem. So efficacy, righteous fire, burning damage, Ellie focus. I've got my flammability with life tap. Uh, I'm personally running determination and purity of elements, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, moving it down over here, there's actually a really nice survivability wheel. So this gives us 16% fire damage with some armor plus guard skill CDR. It only matters if you're using like steel skin or molten shell already. Um, some armor uh, along with some percent regen int. And then coming across, you also grab discipline and training for giga giga life. And then I went up here. So here's a maximum life node coming over here for some spell damage. Um, over here, we've got 30% AOE or sorry, 30% fire damage with 12% AOE and some dot multi along with some more intelligence, so that makes it really nice. If I was going to pursue this, I would go Spell Suppression, but I think I would just go Deadeye if I wanted to go later into maps. And up here, some more Dot Multi with some um, Attack Speed and Cast Speed, along with some Chaos Res, and then one Max All Res, assuming you're actually Res Capped. Now, moving over here to the right, because this is where I went towards the end. Uh, over here, I grabbed some Life, because I want to go towards Cloth and Chain here, so we can get the All Res, um, since getting resistance is a little hard in this mode since you're kind of crafting a lot of attributes on your gear so you're lacking a lot of resistance that brings up another point where helping a lira as one of the bandits is not a bad option because it gives like 15 le res so over here we have the nice dot multi we talked about coming up over here for some useless nodes however over here is when it gets nice 
So I just grabbed like a life notice, some life on kill. There's some life over here. Coming over here though, you actually can grab some strength, but more importantly, you grab sovereignty. When I grabbed sovereignty, I was able to run the double aura. So that's determ and purity. Prior to this, I was just running purity and I think skitterbot or vitality, whatever you kind of need. Um, and then over here, uh, we've got heart of the warrior. And I think I plan on pathing upwards to where there, but I'm kind of done at level 50. It actually went really smooth for me. Like I said, we had no deaths on the character. Uh, I would show you my plate, but it's not accurate because I like went AFK for like a few hours. So I don't know exactly how long it took here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, it was pretty smooth. Uh, pretty happy with it, all things considered. Uh, if you want to take a look at my life regen, we're sitting at 600 life regen with 1600 HP. So that worked out pretty well. But anyway, I'm out. Uh, I'll make some more updates if I plan on playing the event on Monday, but I'm not quite too sure. So hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Hope you guys enjoyed the weekend. I'll catch you guys all later. Hope you don't get too crangled. See you guys tomorrow.